Hey guys, thanks Andy. Thanks um, Rory for the lovely introduction. Um, hey, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are. Um, I'm Julian and um, I'm representing uh, Binance Smart Chain today. I'm here to share with you um, more about the key milestones that we've hit um, over the course of the past one year. Um, as you guys know, you know, we're quickly approaching one year um, with Binance Smart Chain, right? So um, without further ado, let me share some of the key insights as well as um, how we've grown since then. So um, in the past quarter, um, I mean, obviously, um, previously in Q2, um, we reached an all-time high with Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? Uh, we saw um, a lot of popularity in terms of the utilization um, of blockchains and DX building on every single chain, not just by this blockchain, right? Um, and in terms of the resurgence, in terms of um, Bitcoin's price, um, as well as um, how the overall crypto market has been moving, um, we have, have once again hit all-time highs in some of the key metrics in terms of um, our blockchain, right? So for daily active addresses, we have um, close to about 5.6 million at um, its all-time high, which I think was about two or three days ago, um, as well as a total trans daily transaction of about 13 million, right? Um, those kind of metrics, um, as well as data points, are um, actually not from us internally, um, but rather it's open data on BSC Scan. Um, as and the team, uh, as well as everyone on the line smart chain, um, as well as the media, we're all really, really proud of this, um, right? Um, as you can see, it's 260% um, of Ethereum, which is basically the main benchmark um, of how smart contracts as well as the apps came to be. Um, and of, we had 760% of Ethereum's daily tr total transactions um, as well, right? Um, all while obviously keeping the average gas fee incredibly low, right? Um, I think back then previously when, um, Bitcoin was at its all-time high. I think um, our gas fee was about 50 cents, um, but we've seen managed to lower that even more and brought it down to maybe um, 30 cents, um, which is only about 6% of Ethereum, right? And as well, we have that since then also seen a huge increase in terms of uh, num amount of BNP stake, um, amount of total dApps that has been building on Binance Smart Chain, as well as Twitter followers. So um, just to give a brief highlight in terms of how far we came, right? Um, so we started obviously Q2, Q3 um, in testnet where, you know, um, it was kind of um, a hustling moment where we have a lot of pro projects coming to us, you know, building um, on top of Binance Smart Chain, um, as well as developing um, that kind of key infrastructure to enable more projects to come in, right? Uh, and then in Q4, we focus a lot more in terms of um, infrastructure assets. Um, we had the BXC Explorer, um, oracles like Chainlink and all that also provide support directly for Binance Smart Chain. Um, as well as we saw a lot more money markets, AMMs, as well as stable coins, um, all come as well, right? Um, and for Q1, um, I think that's where a lot of um, retail people actually got in um, this year. Um, we On Binance Smart Chain, we saw a lot of aggregation and integrations um, of real, not real assets, synthetic assets, as well as we saw a huge explode, uh, explosion in terms of yield farming, cross-chain and multi-chain capabilities. Um, and then in Q2, which was where the markets kind of had a downturn, uh, we, the team actually worked really, really hard in terms of um, getting on top really more high performance infrastructure. So obviously Chainlink was um, really, really good in terms of helping us, um, you know, really expand our ecosystem with the, with the NFT, DeFi, derivatives, um, gamification, community and social uh, initiatives as well. You know, Chainlink has always been there. Uh, and we're now obviously into three, right? Um, so as I've mentioned earlier, you know, uh, we are fast approaching one year of BSC um, and that will take place sometime in September, right? Uh, we have something really, really big planned out. Um, obviously, I've I wouldn't be able to share uh, more of the details, but I think the community members as well as the blockchain world could definitely look towards that um, and, you know, and enjoy the moment with us, right? Um, in addition to that, obviously in Q3, we see a huge explosion in terms of gaming fight um, applications like uh, Crypto Blades, you know, X Infinity, um, and that kind of stuff where a lot of people um, are actually leveraging the blockchain technology 
um, enjoying themselves, playing games, um, as well as earning an income or livelihood through those games, right? Um, so this quarter, we're focusing really, really heavily on that, um, as well as security initiatives. Um, I think for the past two or three quarters, I think the BSC uh, ecosystem, as well as any other blockchains out there, have all been plagued, I would say, um, by a lot of rock pools, scams, and all that kind of stuff. So we are actually working really hard um, to ensure that our ecosystem is really safe for investors or as well as retail users to come in and use. In addition to that, uh, we've also going to be launching um, sort of like an incubation program through our upcoming MDE program. Okay, so as you can see some of the metrics, you can look at the daily active users and transactions um, beside each other quarter and can, we could essentially see how big we've grown, right? So as of Q3, I think the data last week, we're, we're not sure Q3 yet, uh, but as of today, we have about 1.1 million daily active users, uh, as well as 24 million in terms of transactions. So both of which, you know, 4.1 times of Ethereum, six times of um, Ethereum in terms of transactions. I think that's um, really impressive. Something that we, we are definitely very, very proud of. Okay, so um, some of the infrastructure partners uh, in terms of bridges um, that we have. Um, so I think the, the more popular ones that a lot of people are actually aware of are obviously multi-chain, uh, Poly Network, P Network, um, Curve Grid, etc. Right. Obviously, we are working on some others, um, but I'm not able to share them now. But you, you kind of have a grasp in terms of what we we're trying to really build and um, set up the ecosystem so that it's a really conducive environment for everyone else um, who is looking to build on BSC to come in and build. So um, here's an overview of the overall BSC ecosystem. Um, I think some of our colleagues um, several months ago in the CoinDesk uh, conferences and all that, they shared kind of um, this, uh, a snapshot similar to this. Um, but since Q2, since Q3, we, we have grown a lot, right? I think back then we were only at, were at like 300 D apps, 400 years. And today, if you look at the overview of the BSC ecosystem, uh, we're well stocked or um, we're pretty much, I would say, well developed in every single subcategory of DeFi, right? So if you look at uh, tooling, right, we have BSC Scan, we have obviously our, our lovely partners Chainlink supporting us. Um, Coin Gecko, Coin Market Cap, and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, and in the wallet, obviously, we have Trust Wallet, we have um, BSC Wallet, uh, we have Brave, um, and Swipe, etc. all supporting the BSC ecosystem as well. Um, I, I'm definitely not going to go through every single of these um, projects. There's way too many. Uh, so I will just pick up some of the key areas of DeFi as well as... Um, something that's hot in the, the ecosystem right now, right? So for gaming, obviously, uh, X-Infinity, um, we, we are, um, they are actually on BSD as well. Um, we have CryptoBlaze. I think CryptoBlaze recently uh, has been the talk of the town. Um, I think um, our colleague, Sammy, um, we, we, we shared an interview piece we coined as the other day, and obviously the entire topic was with CryptoBlaze, right? For those people who do not know about CryptoBlaze, um, they're basically a gaming file kind of project where it allows people to basically play and earn um, on the blockchain um, ecosystem, right? So I think, as I previously mentioned um, just a few minutes ago, um, that is something that we definitely see um, the entire DeFi as well as blockchain industry moving towards, right? More and more game studios are coming in. Um, and, you know, I guess instead of X Infinity and a couple of handful of projects, I think it's, I would frankly expect um, it to be another huge explosion, similarly to what has happened with um, NFTs in Q2. Okay, so um, for exchanges and uh, new farming, we have the more famous ones. We have PancakeSwap, uh, we have ApeSwap. Um, ApeSwap was recently in the winners of our MVB2 program. Uh, we have for you farming, we have BV Finance, we have Auto Farm, um, as well as questioning capabilities as well as um, and lending, right? All, all of these are all on PSE. I don't think. Um, some names there, even myself, uh, um, I'm rather unfamiliar, but I think most of them, um, committee members will be very, very well accustomed um, to what kind of protocol and what kind of project they are. Okay. So I'll just skip through this as well. Okay, so um, for us, I think, as I also mentioned in this quarter, our focus will be very heavily um, 
centered around security, right? Um, I think we this is basically what we view the entire security flow to be: security testing and validation, threat intelligence, obviously security ops, as well as security development, right? Um, so we have had in this quarter itself, we have uh, quite a bit of um, strategic partnerships. Um, one of them is the most recent um, $10 million fund um, with Immunify, PackShield, Sturdy, um, basically for um, like a bounty buck program for any of the DeFi ecosystem partners um, to in- basically incentivize even more white, um, more white hat hackers to actually come in and you know review their code and identify if there's any um, critical or high risk issues for users funds, right? Um, so apart from that, obviously we oracles, we're pricing oracles and um, other kind of um, projects that fall within the subcategories equally as um, integral with that um, to us, right? So we, we also had, I think recently had um, a security workshop. I think it was a month long or something like that, where we had um, our deal partners Chainlink, we had uh, Tenderly, um, as well as um, several other security partners that uh, are already providing support within the BSC ecosystem actually come in, talk about smart contracts, talk about uh, pricing oracles and what developers and developer communities can actually do um, to ensure that, you know, um, flash loans um, or attacks are being minimized as well as any potential threats that could jeopardize um, and result in users actually losing a, a bulk amount of their funds, right? So I think in terms of that, we are treating security really, really important. Um, and, you know, projects that are working with us um, or projects that are looking to build that, um, they would also basically agree with us uh, in the sense that they themselves have been stepping up and, you know, working with more smart contract auditors and all that to make the entire PSC space a much safer and conducive space for more projects to grow. So um, for, the, for our roadmap, this was what we obviously set up uh, for uh, at the start of the year. So um, obviously one would be strengthening key critical infrastructure and services, um, including security, right? Which I was just been mentioning. Um, high performance nodes, APIs, toolings, um, crushing capabilities, um, and basically bridging the entire world of centralized finance to decentralized finance, right? Um, and then we also have the portion where we are actually looking to build a secure trust and holistic DeFi infrastructure. So that's what we have been also pretty much working on um, so far. I think those, this part is mainly Q2 um, as and for now, right? Pursuing mass adoption opportunities, um, focusing on specific market segments. So um, our previous campaign, MVP2, um, was um, basically very heavily focused on NFTs. And with the upcoming MVP3, which we will be, would be announcing next week, um, you will see that there will definitely be some sort of shift in terms of what we're focusing on and what kind of projects you know we want to be focusing on in terms of marketing as well as incubation opportunities as well. Okay. So that's really all um, that I have to share. I mean, obviously, you know, the Chainlink guys have been with us and ensuring that um, the BSC ecosystem is possibly, I would say, I, 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 would, I, I think I would phrase it in, in the way where the Chainlink guys are instrumental in, in terms of having DeFi projects actually built on BSC. Um, with the pricing Oracle solutions and all that kind of stuff, uh, there's really so much value that they provide um, to all projects and um, helping us minimize any potential um, risk of, um, you know, a flash on attacks or that kind of stuff. Um, ha- having having said that, um, it's just not just um, the chain guys, right? Um, other security infrastructure um, partners as well um, and all the projects. I think um, it's a community-driven initiative that we're all bending together to create this um conducive environment as well as to take PSC to greater heights, right? Uh, so we, having said that, um, I think that's all for me. Um, once again, uh, thanks for everyone's time. Thanks for tuning in um, and look forward to um, our upcoming BSC anniversary next month. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Jillian. I uh, appreciate your time. If I have, can have you for one second, I have a question sure. um, because okay. I've noticed the BSC community is is really strong as well. And games like Crypto Blades uh, and a lot of other projects just have this uh, incredible support. Are, are the users, are BSC users using other chains as well? Or is there a significant chunk that BSC is their first and only DeFi experience? Do you guys have a sense of that? Um, I, I would say that we would have two kinds of communities, right? Um, one, you will probably have the communities that over uh, come from other different blockchains like Ethereum or, or Solana or Polkadot, and they're just looking for a new chain where their new favorite DApp is there, or, or you know um, maybe a lending app or a, De a DeFi app provides better rates than what they're accustomed to, right? And then we have um, the second kind of uh, customer base where they actually recently just got into blockchain and it could possibly be their first blockchain experience. Um, so I would say we have a pretty much good mix in terms of these two uh, types of user demographics. But I would say that in terms of crypto blades and all that kind of stuff, I would see, I see a lot more possibly newer users coming into the BSC chain um, and you know looking to onboard um, into apps like crypto blades and all that kind of stuff. Regarding cross chain, I think that it's just a matter of time, if you ask me, mm -hmm. before um, projects like crypto blades themselves start to branch out and mm -hmm. um, allow, you know, access um, for different other kind of blockchain users to actually come in and play their game, right? Um, I think that's how the entire DeFi kind of industry is moving towards. So I, I would assume in the near future, you know. Um, you can see that with X Infinity as well, right? Um, now they they are also starting to support BSC, and I'm not even surprised if they start building on, um, I don't know, maybe um, Clayton or uh, Solana mm -hmm. or even um, Polkadot, right? I think that's just something that's coming. It's just really interesting seeing as you know DeFi expands and the community grows and, and everything uh, on chain is how those communities change. So uh, Julian, again, I, I didn't want to keep you too long, but I very much appreciate your time and your insights. Um, uh, so thank you for joining us. Everybody, Thanks, Andy. Gonna... it's been a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm.